Hello, my soccer universe. Frankly, it is way too late. A few minutes past midnight that I'm doing this video. I've been spending uh, now a good hour watching highlights to be able to talk sensibly about what happened today. There were, again, quite some interesting results. And I have to say, uh, this week, the results happening, it was a pretty darn good week. Even today, there were a few... I don't want to call them shockers, but you know, um, results that came unexpectedly. And we are all the better for it. Um, first off, I shot actually a video yesterday on my way to work about uh, Inter against Lazio. And for some reason, I shot a time lapse video. So I'm not gonna <laughs> did not post that one. Um, just my quick thoughts it was a scrappy game in a way uh it went to overtime scrappy first goal by immobile but typically goal strikers goal um and then a totally unnecessary penalty uh of the inter player d'ambrosi i think is running out of the box and is being uh, fouled get a penalty in stoppage time penalty shootout um each team had missed one on, on the second rounds, uh, Icardi scored a wonderful uh, penalty right down the middle, lopped it in, and seemingly Strakosha made a note of that because when Nangolan stepped up, he remained standing. Nangolan shot straight down the middle, saved, and therefore Lazio is through to the semi final against Milan. Uh, and I gotta say, I was very happy, not Necessary because, yes, I was happy that Inter was out, but I was very happy that finally the goalkeeper remains standing and makes a save. Um, it got a little bit too prevalent that, you know, if you don't know where, you put, put it right down high the middle. Um, it's got to stop. I think goalkeepers have now three options that they can choose, and uh, i got to make that. So, and of course, we have Real Madrid also moving on in the... Copa del Rey, which sets up very nicely a uh, Clasico semi-final, which was drawn yesterday. And so we get already this week a Clasico, then we get a one uh, towards the end of the month. And then just within a week, if not a few days later, we get the one in the league. I think the ones in Copa del Rey will be a little bit more competitive, so we're definitely going to watch February 6th, first one. So exciting month at soccer wise it is only February we have Champions League we have Classicals um, I'm sure we I mean Real Madrid's program pretty tough I mean they have Atletico Madrid coming up, they have Barcelona coming up three times they have Ajax which is the easy point so uh, it's it's gonna be interesting and we're not even talking about any other league uh, speaking of leaks, I decided to wear Chelsea uh, for this video. When I looked over, over the results, it was between Tottenham and Chelsea, where I felt comfortable really wearing um, a jersey. And since Chelsea was a little bit the team of the week, I thought, let's wear Chelsea. Team of the week, yeah, sorry. Um, still has motivational problems. Locked out the team in the uh, locker room to talk to them. And, you know... I, I think it's really that he is a person that's just way too honest and uh, it's against his own code. I think he really, really wants to know what's happening. I don't think he wants to really knock on the players or whatever. He's just, uh, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve and uh, just doesn't make for good results. But let's start in the Premier League and let's start with Chelsea because they got the results that they so desperately needed and maybe this gets them rolling again against the last place team. Huddersfield, Egoin gets on the score sheet twice. Uh, his second goal was the 4 nil. It was a wonderful goal. If the first one was nicely played. Azar gets a penalty and, and takes another nice goal. And then David Luiz, who was horrible um, during the week. I think it was a Bournemouth, yeah, Bournemouth, where he received... Where he, uh, he, I think he received the ball through his leg and da, 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 a complete disaster um, getting this goal. So Chelsea is back to winning ways. 5-0. Uh, uh, let's look at other results. Tottenham against Newcastle. I mean, Newcastle, a big uh, a story. This 
would have been almost a big story this week if it wasn't for Fiorentina and Roma. Tottenham wins 1-0 against the Newcastle, but it was not that straightforward. Um, they had more possession than uh, Newcastle, of course, uh, more part of the game, but uh, Newcastle hit the post. There was also a great chance by Ericsson that Fabian Scherk uh, just scrapped off the line um, in mid-air. Mid, mid this was one of those actions where both the attack and the defense was just world-class. And in the end, it's Son back from the Asian Cup. They desperately need him, who may get the breakthrough, a goalkeeping mistake for sure. Let's look at the other results. Uh, some of them I have not even really seen. We have Brighton and Watford 0 0, Burnley, Southampton 1 1. Doesn't really help either one of those. Crystal Palace, Fulham. Fulham after the win now, losing against Crystal Palace. That doesn't help them. Everton, Wolves 1 3, and Cardiff, Bournemouth 2 0. Uh, tomorrow Leicester against uh, United, City against Arsenal, and on Monday we have West Ham against Liverpool. Um, so Tottenham now is temporarily ahead of uh, City, but I, I really think temporarily uh, Chelsea, Arsenal, it will depend. It might as well that Chelsea goes back in fourth place if City wins against uh, Arsenal. I think City probably will get a little bit more motivation that you know they on Liverpool only got a draw after. The, they lost, so um, remains to be seen. Wolves is in seventh. Watford um, goes ahead of Everton for now. There's not much movement. I mean, Crystal Palace um, goes one up, 14th spot over Newcastle in 15th, so it is 26 and 24 points. Southampton 24, Burnley 24, and then uh, Cardiff 22, Fulham 17, and Huddersfield 11. It doesn't look good for Fulham, doesn't look good for Huddersfield. I think Cardiff has a chance for sure. And yeah, Emiliano Sala, a horrible story. So that's it for Premier League. I didn't watch anything Premier League. I probably would have watched some Bundesliga today if I had the chance uh, because there were a few interesting games. Uh, yesterday we had already Hanno uh, what was it? Yeah, Hanover against Leipzig, where Leipzig won 3 0. Um, Leverkusen against Bayern was a game that is, you know, a pretty good game most of the time. Uh, Bayern took an early lead through Goretzka, early, early lead in the first half. A first half lead, uh, there should have... Uh, there should have been a penalty for um, Leverkusen right in the first minute. Hummels outstretched arm. If this was the Asian Cup or in the, at the World Cup, this would have been a penalty. But the Germans do it their own way. I actually think it's in, interesting that they, um, the VAR is handling Cologne and they they tell the referee what was happening. So Bayern has the uh, lead in the 41st minute, but right in the second half, Leverkusen comes storming back. Um, Bailey. Wonderful free kick makes it 1 1. Then they're ca caught on account of Folland. Really great goal. Really greatly played. I mean, there was a Bayern attack and they just on the counter get them. Bayern then, of course, tries to come back. Um, there were some penalty appeals, but the ball hit the shoulder. And Alario, which was ruled initially offside, makes another really nice counter-attacking move. Makes it 3-1 for Leverkusen. Bayern's seven-game winning streak is snapped. And now the big question is, was a little bit like the Newcastle City game. Uh, in a way. Now the big question is uh, Frankfurt Dortmund, which was played at the same time. It was not like uh, in England where Liverpool played the day later. Uh, can Dortmund increase the lead over Bayern? Well, they took an early throw. Royce had a pretty big chance uh, to make it 2-0, but then it was Frankfurt who cool came back, where Dortmund was lucky, and in the end it was Jovic who got the equalizer. In the second half, uh, you know, the result was well known to everyone on the pitch there and Dortmund tried their best. I think they hit once the post or, um, you know, at least the side netting couldn't break through and uh, it ended 1-1. So, you know, despite the loss, Bayern is still not pulled away. However, Bayern is not in second place anymore. That honor now goes to Gladbach, who in a crazy game uh, where they had against Schalke, where, you know, it seemed like it's going for a nil-nil draw after um, Nübert had made a great save in the first half um, already. He gets sent off early in the for second half. 
And from that moment on, it was all Gladbach. And in the 85th, Krama was deflected, gets the goal, and then Neuhaus makes it in the 91st. So Gladbach is now the new second place team. Uh, let's look quickly at the other results before we uh, look at the table. Uh, we have Hot Hoffheim 2, Düsseldorf 1-1, one, one. Um, Hertha Wolfsburg 0-1, that's uh, surprising. Nuremberg Bremen 1-1, one, one. doesn't help either one. And that was that. So uh, we have two games tomorrow, Augsburg Mainz and Stuttgart Freiburg. We have now Dortmund 7 points ahead of Gladbach. 7 points is something, but you know, it could have been 9. Uh, Gladbach, Bayern are of course level on points, but Gladbach has the better goal differential. Leipzig is in fourth with 37, then Frankfurt 32. Wolfsburg is now six spots at 31. Leverkusen 30. Hoffenheim drops 29 points. Uh, Hertha 20, 28. And then, you know, it's two more. Uh, Werder uh, in 10th with 27 points, and Mainz will play tomorrow also with 27 points. So. Uh, remains to be seen how that goes, but that's basically the midfield. Um, bottom of the table, Nürnberg and Hannover switch because Nürnberg made that one point, but you know, 12 and 11, uh, the relegation spot is with 14 points now. Stuttgart, who has a game in hand against Augsburg. Ah, uh, nah, Stuttgart plays against Freiburg. So there are two um, relegation battles tomorrow. So we have Stuttgart, Freiburg, and Augsburg. He's playing Mainz. Yeah, Mainz is maybe not a relegation. But at the moment, Freiburg, 21 points. Seems just about safe. Schalke and to Düsseldorf at 2022. This is kind of the no man's land, although more looking down. And Augsburg, 15. Stuttgart, 14. Nuremberg, 12. Hannover, uh, 11. A lot to be played there. What was I watching? I was watching mostly La Liga, although I actually had... Um, some Serie A. Did not really watch it, but the first game that I turned on and I actually saw all the goals live. Uh, but that was pretty much all I saw was the Basque Derby between Real Sociedad and Athletic Bilbao. Um, the first goal that was a free kick for Athletic Bilbao that is cleared wide, and then suddenly Oya Sabal. Uh, Manages to get past the last defender because the ball was jumping and he totally misjudged it. And goalkeeper comes out, doesn't want to go with the hand to avoid a red card. Come on, goes with foot, so can go around empty net. The second goal by William Jose. Um, also, I mean, I think it was a corner kick that was so badly defended. I mean, it was like a pinball machine, and suddenly it is ahead of William. And he just uh, slammed it in. It was a nice shot, but everything before that was uh, not. So very well deserved. I mean, they could have gotten three or four in the first half. And yeah, they got a lucky penalty. Uh, Bilbao that was converted on the rebound because it was uh, Raul Garcia uh, was initially saved, but uh, goalkeeper couldn't hold on to it. And then uh, it was 2-1. So that was the first game that I saw a little bit of. Uh, earlier the day, Uesca Real Valladolid was 4 0. That was yesterday, actually. Then Levante get off 0 0. And then the big game, Barcelona Valencia. And actually, at the same time, um, in the morning, I saw there's only two games that I'm really interested in. That was Barcelona Valencia, and that was Napoli against Sampdoria, which I thought could be a real fun game. To a degree, it was uh, because those are two teams that are really fun to watch, to be honest. But um they were almost at the same time i mean napoli started at six barcelona at 6 30 and of course i start out with napoli watch the first half then switch over and that game was interesting i mean i missed the first 50 minutes i missed a big chance by valencia but uh when i switched over it was barcelona dominating valencia i mean really really putting uh strength close i mean you could sense there's something coming yeah something was coming 24th minute gamero Makes it 1-0 on a beautifully executed counter. That was, while I was watching, the first time that Valencia crossed the midfield and uh, scored really dangerous. And it gets even better um, a few minutes later. I mean, Barcelona is still furious going forward. But you could see Coutinho um, was not quite there. Um, and Suarez was almost invisible for the entire game. Uh, which is usually dangerous because, you know, he's such a great striker. But, yeah, it was weird. I mean, Barcelona also 
rotated a few players in. I mean, if you look, it was Vermaelen playing, uh, Nelson Samedo was playing, Alenia was playing, um, Coutinho was playing. So, you know, it's not... Uh, there is a um, classic of Kamkakakamer, so you don't want to really... Uh, Put, you know, you wanna give you uh, some players a little, a little bit of the rest. I'm actually interested if Dembele will play uh, against Real Madrid. Anyway, so cross in and uh, Roberto makes contact. Was not really making a foul, but it was enough con 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 contact that Valencia gets another penalty and Parejo slams it home two 0 And on the one side, I was oh oh. That game is really interesting now. I think at that point the Napoli game was already decided. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, I said, okay, I'm gonna stick with that one. I'm, I think that might be an interesting watch. And it was already, it was pretty uh, quick, quick, quickly absorbing. Uh, Barcelona, of course, came back um, and there was an attacking uh, attacking move where a foul was made in made a minute box and then Barcelona scores and the referee for some reason decides we have to take the penalty. Um, this was a really bad call. Still penalty, Messi makes it 1-2. Barcelona hits the post and Valencia was kind of lucky to go with the lead in the, into halftime. I mean, that was counter-attacking soccer for, uh, in, the, in, in, in his purest form. Right after halftime, a great shot by Messi is saved by uh, Neto. And then it was actually Valencia who could have made a third. Two really great counter ch uh, chances uh, that kept Barcelona honest in a way. But a minute after the second one, where it was really a uh, cross in, and I think it was again um, uh, Moreno. Who could not? Who connected with uh, his weak right foot, and that's why it went over the bar. If this would have been on the left, um, you don't know. A minute later, a seemingly frustrated Messi uh, gets the ball at the box after that gets pinned. They, uh, Valencia fails to clear and puts it in the net, and you could see a lot of frustration was coming out. I mean, I've, it was just a two-two against Valencia. I mean, and he celebrated almost like they won the trophy. Maybe it's uh, putting it too high, but yeah, it was a important equalizer. And then Messi, I think, was uh, slightly injured. They took him on sideline, but he came back playing. And I had the feeling that Barcelona could, but they were not that well in play and couldn't get it done. And so it ends 2 2, and Barcelona drops points. Will not hurt them too much, I guess, but still. Celta Vigo wins against Sevilla 1 0. That's the evening result. I haven't seen that one. That's actually also, also in interesting. Tomorrow, Betis Atletico. That sounds like a nice game. And then Real Madrid Alaves. I remember the first game that Alaves won. So that could also be interesting. Uh, at the moment, Barcelona has a six point lead over Atletico, but a game in hand. So uh, it could be cut down a little bit to three points. And yeah, uh, Real Madrid 11 points. I don't think that the Real Madrid will be able to catch Barcelona, but they will do their best to get points uh, to get past Barcelona in the Copa del Rey. Valencia now 36 points, Getafe 22, Alaves. If they pull something, they can get closer to Sevilla. Uh, Valencia is seventh with 30 points. They finally start uh, getting. I mean, they have a lot of draws. They have six wins, 12 draws, four losses. If Valencia starts winning, they I think they can get dangerous. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna talk. Um, tomorrow a little bit more about Spain and so we are left with Serie A uh, I'm I apologize I have not really followed La Liga for a while and I'm not sure if with PSG is so uh, dominant I don't know if I will get into it although the, the spot for the second place is quite second third up is quite interesting I uh, gotta, gotta give it I actually want to do uh, these days maybe not this week but maybe next week um, you know go through the other biggish leagues and how things stand. But you know, uh, Italy, Empoli, Chievo 2 2. I think Chievo had a 2 1 lead at halftime. I want to just, just check if it was a bigger lead. 
Yeah, it was even a 2 0 lead. Uh, at that, that was an interesting uh, stoppage time. Kievo 2 0 in the f 50, 45 plus 1, and then 1 2 Caputo, 45 plus 2, and then in the 50 second, make it 2 2. Giaccarini got the lead for uh, Kievo. Napoli Sampdoria uh, was not as fun as I expected. I mean, Cagliarella playing for, for uh, against the team that he loves most. Uh, his scoring streak stopped. I think at 11 games, he is not level with Batistuta. Uh, you could see that he's super dangerous. When they uh, attacked, he was always there and it was uh, close to connecting, but he didn't score today. It was Napoli and uh, within a minute, I mean, they had chances before, but Milik in the 25th and uh, Insigne in the 26th, both really nicely assisted by Kajon, with an, uh, a few uh, more uh, in the second half. The 15 minutes or so, really nice moves to get um, to get more goals. Uh, I didn't see it in the last goal, it was a penalty by Verti. Um, but it was quickly going into Nap to Napoli's way. Insigne stops his uh, goal scoring drought and Napoli's back a goal scoring way. So we'll see uh, where they go if they um, you know, they're a little bit they out, of, out, out of the slump. And then the big result was Juve Parma, where I saw the first half, and it was all Juventus. And uh, they were threatening to score uh, most of the time. It was kind of, why haven't they scored already until in the 36th? Ronaldo uh, it's kind of deflected, gets his goal, and then I thought, okay, I know how this game is going. And I decided, yeah, let's put the kids to bed. I missed out. When I saw the highlights now, there were more chances for Juventus, uh, namely by Kedira. Uh, Juventus also played with um, with Cáceres and Rugani in uh, the defense because, you know, Chiellini is out. I think they wanted to give Bonucci some rest. So uh, it was in, in, in interesting to see a uh, second string defense for Juventus. But it was Rugani who then gets the second goal. But just two minutes later, uh, Barilla hits back for Parma, 64th, 66th. Nice uh, crossing by Mandzukic. Uh, Ronaldo heads it in, makes it 3 1. He already got the assist on the Rugani goal. And you think this is all done and dusted. Uh, Juventus had so many chances, 3 1. That's it. Nope. Javinho was also kind of deflected, makes it uh, 3 2. And I mean, I saw. I remember in the first game where Juve got an early lead, and then Parma should have gotten the draw. Uh, Parma is a really pesky team, and I like it. And I love those jerseys. I really do love those jerseys. Um, today, my wife uh, was trying to get a jersey. We are giving presents for Valentine's Day. Uh, but yeah, I think she chose some something very, 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 very special. But I didn't remind her about the Parma jersey. But you know, I'm sure I will sooner or later I will have a nice Parma jersey. And then everything goes, you know, nothing. Um, typically, you were, yes, you still have a 1 0 lead, you can play it down, uh, maybe make a goal or something like that. But then Manjukic fails to hold onto the ball near the corner flag. The ball comes in, uh, falls at the feet of Javinho, and it is 3 3, more or less out of nowhere. And everyone asks, how can this be? Juventus was so dominant. Juventus is very vulnerable at the moment. And now they play against Atletico Madrid. That is gonna be interesting. That's an interesting matchup. Maybe they're saving themselves for that game, but yeah, Juventus only 3 3. That's not gonna, that's not gonna help. So Napoli is back within nine points of Juventus. I still don't see it, but Juventus looks vulnerable to me. Uh, games tomorrow, when I look at it, uh, Udine Fiorentina. Yeah, that's the our story rematch. Two cities that I visited in 2017, so uh, I like that one. Into Bologna will go somewhere, and then of course there's uh, Roma Milan, and we have two late games uh, on, on Monday evening. But yeah, I'm gonna watch Roma Milan, and probably I wanna see. I wanna watch City Ar Arsenal tomorrow, so we'll talk about that probably tomorrow. But yeah. That's what happened today. Uh, again, very interesting. Uh, I think the Barcelona game was absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous game. But uh, even when, when you saw what happened in the Bundesliga, lots to talk about.
Okay. Let me know what you thought about today. Uh, again, I, th I think many Bayern, Barcelona, Juventus, I mean, all big teams are kind of a little bit in a shaky form these days. So uh, we'll see how where, where this will go. Let, let me know what you think about all that. Sari, uh, Bayern, Dortmund, whatever. Let, let me know in the comments below. It is still very late. It was a very long video. Give me a thumbs up if you still enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.